Hello everybody and welcome to Russell, the new show where we get on mic and we vent about the things that annoy us. This series will mostly be aimed at gacha games and the format may change around over time. And who knows, maybe we'll even get other content creators to join in and let us know what gets them rustled. To start off this brand new series, we'll be covering the current state of weekly Shonen Jump Ore collection. It's past, it's present, and it's potential future. This is as good a time as any to remind you that this video is entirely my opinion and the opinion shared with me from members of the community and as such does not represent an unbiased view of the game, but rather a collective of opinions. So you may have your own opinion and you may disagree and you're entirely entitled to that opinion, um, but please do bear that in mind while watching the video. So, the first order of business is establishing what I consider makes a gacha game good. Now, this will be different from person to person, so just try and have your own measuring stick in your head when watching this video so you can see how the game measures up for you. The three things I take into consideration when talking about what makes a gacha game good are as follows. Number one, I enjoy playing the game. Obviously. Number two, it never makes me feel like I'm required to spend money on the game in order to enjoy it. Number three, it does enough to make me want to spend money on the game anyway. A good example of this would be Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. I'm sure many, many people will disagree with me on this, but the fact remains, I enjoy playing the game, even if I'm not the best at it. It never makes me feel like I'm required to spend in order to get involved in a big Dokkan Fest or event because they give out so many stones for various different rewards and the sales and tantalizing step ups are often enough to leverage a bit of money out of my wallet anyway. You see, one of the things I've come to understand in my time playing gacha games is that obviously gacha games will inherently target the whales as their main source of income. But for me, a truly great gacha game understands that every single user is a potential paying customer and does what they can to make as many pay to win players possible. In my opinion, this has been one of the major cornerstones of Dokkan's success. Obviously having Dragon Ball as the main selling point does a lot of the work for them, but they have been consistently hitting top in the App Store and Google Play Store every month or so. And to me, that is a sign that people are willing to spend when big events come around regardless of if they are whales or they aren't. So, what about Ori Collection? Well, for me there was a time when it comfortably fulfilled all three points. The game was fun, the community was buzzing, and events would normally allow enough leeway for players to save and spend on big banners without needing to invest real money in the game. Despite that, I had spent a little of my own, because a, I wanted to be able to pull a bit more on big banners, and B, I was more than happy to spend a little to support the devs and what they were creating. Times, however, have changed, and in recent months the lack of content has led to a lack of love on YouTube, on Twitch, on Discord, on Twitter, not just from English people but from Japanese too. People seem to slowly be falling out of love with this game because it isn't giving them what they're looking for. Now, before we roll on into the doom and gloom, I'd like to talk about some of the strong points of Ori Collection. What they did right, and in some cases what they're still doing right to this day. Character quests let you grind up to max over boost at your own pace, and a lot of them are really useful. The gacha ticket system lets you save up summons for banners you really care about, and you really don't have to worry about your orb count as much. Stamina bottles were a fantastic idea. I could choose when I wanted to use the stamina, who I wanted to use it on, and I could save them up in case I wanted them later. It let me grind for the characters that I actually wanted. It's just a shame we don't see as much of them anymore. This game has had fantastic art consistently from the start, and very few outliers have been showing up recently. Uh... To be fair, the game balance in what is already a complicated PvP setup is handled quite well. There's no units right now that stand out that are absolutely 100% unbeatable. You just have to rework your team. That being said, of course it does obviously focus towards whales and people have been playing when certain units are available that aren't available anymore and stuff like that, but in general 
I think they've done a pretty good job. Well, a big pro is getting to play with so many different characters from so many different series. I mean, that's pretty good in my opinion. It's given me exposure to a lot of different series and characters that I wasn't familiar with, and it's made me want to go read those series, and uh, some of them I have really enjoyed, so I at least have to give credit for that. The events are pretty fun too, except for the fact that we haven't had one in like two months, so I'm guessing they're pretty much dead. Um, Alright, fuck it, look. We're just going to move on to the cons, and then once we get through the cons, we can move on to the actual constructive criticism part, so, um, yeah. Okay, cons, where the fuck do we start? Alright, let's try and get a few of these quick fired off and then we'll see what happens. What the hell happened to events? Where did they go? One new standard gacha unit in two months? Why aren't you updating the old guaranteed 5 star gacha pool? Single unit banners are fucking stupid in a game with 50 years of content to pull from. PvP? Being the main game mode for this game, with the way you've set it up? Man, you know, I really just don't want to get into that one, we're gonna be here all day, let's move on. One new raid and one new character quest a month is not enough content, that should be obvious. Pumping out a new season of PvP every month also does not qualify as content, because instead of stage design, we just fight each other over and over. We didn't even get any reprints this month, just two new stages total for people to run, Itachi and Shinpachi. The Prince of Tennis event showed a move in the right direction for event quests, because it took the grinding for new units aspect of character quests and tied it together into a whole event. Funnily enough, that was the last event we ever got. Damn, these, these last two months have been uh, quite dire. Why are orbs so fucking expensive? Put some sales on and you'll entice more people to spend. Look at games like Dokkan and OPTC in these last couple of weeks. When you have sales on, people spend. When was the last time we got a new story in New Tower? Oh, that's right. Fucking never. Why the fuck is gold times two a thing and not times two anything else? Gold is literally the one thing I don't need. What the fuck was that April Fool's Yamada Taro bullshit? I get that it's April Fools, but you teased Frieza, something that people have wanted for a very long time, and then one of the only six units you released that month was an almost identical card to a card that was already in the game and nobody cared about anyway. Why do you keep manipulating the rates? I get that you want jump units to be rarer than others, but the last three banners you have altered the rates, making the chance of people pulling something new off them lower each time. Why have some series just been completely forgotten about? I mean, there are 31 series with one unit total. Some of those series have been like that since launch. Meanwhile, 8 series not only have multiple units, but have 2 jump units as well. No, no wait, make that 9 series, because Jump Killer got teased while I was making this video. This is, uh... This is kind of depressing, and you know, I was really worried with this series that it would just lead to me ranting on about all the little things that piss me off. I mean, I guess that's the point, but that's all we're going to do and we're not getting anything done. So I want to talk about some of the improvements. I want to try and be somewhat constructive at least, and I mean, God knows I've already missed a load of stuff and I'm going to miss a load more, so... Let's just, let's just get through this video. Let's just get to the other side. Put more things in the PvP store. Stuff like packs of normal dumbbells, 4 star fodder, arena point boost items, old reprint characters, etc. Right now, I'm not touching 99% of the things in that store. It's just over boost and tickets. Give points for the arena store as a rank reward at the end of the season. You should really reward the people that have been sticking with PvP this whole time because it is very repetitive and I don't think they get the rewards that they deserve. Let people have multiple arena teams so that they can switch out easily depending if they want to attack or defend or try something new. 
Reduce the penalty for losses on defence. Sometimes there's literally nothing you can do about it. Boost the stats and point gain of different units each season. That way you can encourage different teams to be built and it will change the meta from season to season depending on who's boosted. I don't think there are many changes you can make to this game mode without completely overhauling the current system and changing what it is at its roots, so let's move swiftly on. I don't really have a series of points for Tower. It hasn't been updated since launch and so I can't really tell you what can and can't be improved because it's not something that's currently being worked on. That being said, I do have an idea of what could be done with it. In my opinion, the Tower could potentially become this game's version of Training Forest from OPTC. If you're not familiar, essentially Training Forest is a long form version of content. Um, they typically are quite difficult, especially for the beginners, and they are seen as the game's version of end game content. Here is my idea. For the sake of argument, add in let's say 10 stages a month. They don't need to be inspiringly designed or anything, but make them challenging. Think of around raid difficulty, with some stages being a decent bit harder, and some maybe being a little bit easier to begin with. But the difference would be, instead of one boss per stage, like in raids, we can change it and we can have multiple stages you have to beat in a row with multiple bosses. This will give utility to units who at the moment don't get used because their skill sets aren't suited to Legend Arena and they don't fit the very specific teams you need for raids. The rewards could be something along the lines of a special 5 star scene that is very useful but obviously by making it harder to get, it makes people want to work for it. Honestly with raids there's not much to say. The only one thing that stands out to me that absolutely needs to be improved is the time slots. They're just stupid to me. Just let me farm at my own pace over the course of a week instead of pressuring me into being on at specific times and having stamina specifically available at those times and I'm gonna have to gem for stamina anyway. This should be obvious but adding new story really wouldn't be that difficult. It's not like it has to be super difficult like raids or tower, if you don't want it to be that is. But maybe you can throw in some tricky stages here and there with gimmicks or whatever and just add in a small source of goodies like scenes, orbs, tickets, uh, whatever. It doesn't have to be a lot, it just has to be something, you know? Surprisingly, I actually like how character quests are being handled right now, uh, but having them as the only regular PvE content is incredibly boring. Event quests at least let us experience the events of the manga a little bit. Um, that being said, these quests in general I think would be fine if it wasn't for the fact that we were only getting one per month. At least make it two per month to make up the gap a little bit. The following suggestions are kind of all over the place and obviously I don't expect everything to be fixed all at once. These are just general things that I think would be nice to be updated in the future. Please update your site, it hasn't been updated since last September. Either add the ability to level scenes or remove the button completely. Make dumbbells and all similar consumable items stackable. Add certain items like scrolls and dumbbells to the store permanently and then make the daily ones that we've been seeing a reduced cost version. I don't like that you can only buy 99 of something at a time, it really doesn't make sense. There is no point, it's an arbitrary limit. Please remove it or change it to 100. This isn't gaming in the 80s and 90s. Changing the limit to 3 digits is not a massive task. Be a little less stingy with overboost. I have over 100 characters and many of them don't even have level 1 overboost. I get that it's a premium level breaking feature, so obtaining it easily shouldn't be expected, but as somebody who has played in the early days, I have way more overboost than many new players and I still don't think we have enough. Under the era section in the search bar, add a subfilter that lets me search for a specific series, especially in the case of scenes. In the tutorial, please start giving a 5 star unit instead of a 4 star. Evolving is a pain as it is, but at the beginning it's a massive chore 
And maybe part of the tutorial can be giving special 5 star fodder to evolve your starter unit with. Because beginners really need a fair chance getting started and the tickets and orbs and stuff are great but you're encouraging them not to evolve characters in the proper fashion. Remove fodder and evolver items from the character log and put them in their own section with consumables in like an item log or something. Add a way to evolve fodder into 5 star. Add the chance to summon fodder at 4 star even if it is a rare occurrence. Set the max level of fodder to 1 so I don't have to waste my time and my dumbbells on awakening them. Not every unit has to have a super specific ability set for a specific PvP team. You can release units that aren't good in PvP, as long as there is another game mode for me to use them in. Change the rewards for the Mitsui login campaign to 3 star units, so we can actually get some overboost on him if we want to. Add more than one unit per gacha, 3 should be the absolute minimum. Be more specific in news posts so we know exactly what is going on with certain changes in the game. At one point you updated over a hundred characters passives and skills and didn't even tell us who. You just said changes had been made. No scene should be locked to an event anymore. Once the event goes away the scene should be available in the gacha. Give a jump awakening to an old unit at least once a month or bundle them in with other special events like Dokkan does. Well, I'm sure I can think of more for this section, but let's move on to stuff I'd like to see added to the game in the future to keep it fresh. Hold a vote in-game each month to see what people are enjoying, what they'd like to see improved, and what they'd like to see added. I see people from both the Japanese and English communities making complaints on Twitter about how certain things are handled. Bring back event quests, but add to them. For instance, bring back the Saint Seiya event, but make Icky grindable and add a new Jump Athena or someone similar. Maybe even give Jump Awakenings to the old Saints that were added to the gacha. Add exclusive units to the power up gacha to drop very rarely. Maybe characters you don't have plans for in the future. These cards don't have to be great, just a collectible. Put sales on for big events, and not the silly smallest gem pack discount, like a proper sale that we see in other games. Bring back login units, but maybe for two weeks at a time, and make sure there is always one on. Maybe one new and one old each month, unless you will make the old ones into character quests in the future, in which case, two new login units a month. Celebrate big moments in real life, in game. For instance, if the game hits any download target or follower target or total days open target or whatever, you can celebrate that. You can also celebrate stuff like mangas hitting a certain amount of chapters or getting turned into an anime or something along those lines and that way you'll have a lot of things to put on in game to celebrate. And it doesn't have to be that you have characters available from those series. You could just release goodies related to the series. For instance, like at Christmas when we got the special overboost soda cans with the characters' pictures on it and stuff like that. Hold special seasonal events and include costumed versions of units like we so often see on the covers of issues of Jump. Cover special crossover manga like Cross Epoch as in-game events. Add in 2 times items other than the 2 times gold item and put them as rewards for dupes in the gacha scene alongside the times 2 gold item. Communicate more with the fans and tease us more. Right now the only interaction we get is telling us what will come for the next month. But let us know that you hear the feedback on Facebook and in the store reviews and on Twitter and lead us on with the reveals. Don't just announce everything for the month all at once. Tease us a little bit. Well, I'm 100% sure I missed a bunch of stuff there and uh, these things happen. Um, but I'm going to have feedback from the various people in the community that uh, contributed their opinions for this video and I'll throw those up on the screen somewhere while I'm handling the conclusion. Now, do I think this video will actually change anything? Of course not. I'm just venting and I'm sharing my ideas which 
you know, everyone is fully entitled to do. And if you have opinions to share on the matter, then post them in the comments. And, you know, I have a strong feeling that some people will say I missed out a lot of things. Some people will say I was being a little bit harsh. Some people will say I was being a complete moron. But you're all entitled to your opinion. That's how it is. I'm going to reference quickly three things that I think I'm going to be asked, if not in the comments, at least in, on Discord and stuff. So I'll answer these now, and then if you have any, any other questions, you can post them. If I think this game is so bad, then why do I still play it? Well, there's a reason I still play this game despite its current state. Meanwhile, I drop games like Ken Geki Kenran and Yu Yu Hakusho Makai Toitsu's Strongest Battle. It's because, to me, those games had no hope, no potential. They were fundamentally flawed, and they couldn't be fixed without overhauling the entire game. With Ore Collection, small changes here and there, and a constant content schedule would be enough to tr start harnessing this untapped potential that this game has, and I genuinely hope to see it. I love this game. I just don't love where it's at right now. This game's only in its first year. Other games didn't have all this stuff that I'm talking about in the video in their first year, so I'm being unfair. Maybe. And truth be told, I'd like to agree with that point, but the fact of the matter is, the game isn't competing for money with one year games. The games on the market vary from just being made to all the way up to four or five years and sure if you were just competing with other one year games where you're at right now would be fine but consumers who play multiple versions of these games only have a limited amount of money they can spend and you're competing with every single other game on the market so it's up to you to make a concerted effort to make them want to spend their money on you. Why didn't I mention Jumputi in this video? I think making the comparison between the two is kinda silly. They stem from the same source material, but the two are fundamentally very different games, and therefore have somewhat, at least, different audiences. Uh, it is much easier to create and balance characters and content for Jumputi. So I don't think it's 100% fair to compare the two games in that way. However, I will say there are a handful of things that Jumputi have handled very well. And I would expect that if Ori Collection adopted some of these things, then the fans would really appreciate it. Well, knowing my luck, by the time this video goes out, it will be made completely irrelevant by stuff they announce while I am making it. But fuck it, here it is. Hope you guys enjoyed. Dislike if you disliked it, like if you liked it, leave a comment giving your opinion on the game or the video itself because I genuinely want to hear back from you, but until next time, see you later.